Good morning. Can you guys hear me okay? Love the turnout here today. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. All right. Well, I'm Carissa Landymore. I am the uh, DEOS Program Director. Really excited to be here today to talk to you about DEOS. Um, as you know, we, uh, we offer a portfolio of services focused on enterprise-wide collaboration on all uh, classified levels. Uh, the majority of our panel today will be focused on IL-6 and how things are progressing on that front. Um, but before we dive into that, I'll just touch on uh, just a little bit about our overall portfolio. Okay, um, so for folks that aren't tracking, um, we offer again a portfolio of services. So I'm gonna start here on the left. Am I good? I, did I go too far? Okay. Um, our blanket purchase agreement. So in November of 2020, uh, we stood up a blanket purchase agreement. Um, and this is really for folks, a lot of people think of it as a place where you can purchase licenses uh, for the IL-5 environment, IL-6, but it's a lot more than that. Um, we've awarded over, I wanna say, 1.9 million in licenses, subscription licenses for Microsoft IL-5, um, but on the labor services side, we have a lot to offer there as well for folks that are looking for operation and maintenance support of their IL-5 tenant, for folks that are looking for migration support, training support, engineering support. So there's a lot there. Um, it's really a one-stop shop for, for all your needs in that environment. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to stop and, uh, and see me after this. Moving over to the right, our DOD 365 joint tenant. Uh, we are the most diverse tenant out of the 14 in the DOD. Uh, we support over 80 organizations across the defense agencies and the combatant commands. Um, we also have about 150,000 users that we support. Um, and you can kind of see there what, our, what we provide along, around collaboration, messaging, content management, all the things that you guys are familiar with, with Teams, SharePoint, all of that, OneDrive. Moving over to the right, again, we're gonna focus on DOD 365 SEC with my uh, remarkable panel here to my left. Um, so I'll skip that for now. Uh, but another key uh, service that we're now offering effective this past September is our DOD 365 integrated phone system. Um, so a lot of you are probably tracking our team's audio conferencing. That's where you can dial in with an access code uh, but this is the evolution of that. This is now offering inbound and outbound calling, offering you the ability you can start to, um, you know, sunset your hard phones. You won't need that as much. You can reduce that footprint. This will now focus on providing soft phones. So we're really excited about that. And I do have our project manager. I don't know. There she is. Uh, so she, uh, she'll keep me straight. So um, if you have questions, feel free to see us afterwards. We'd be happy to talk about how that is progressing as well. And then our legacy services. Um, so DISA did something interesting. They went ahead and folded the DEE service offering, which is the legacy email capability, along with the on-prem uh, SharePoint capability depths. Folded that under my portfolio as well. This is great because it allows us to help modernize help our mission partners with their migration, make it seamless, so when they're transitioning from those on-prem capabilities up into the cloud, we're all in that same organization together and helping the mission, part helping the mission partner um, and make it very seamless. We have some cool metrics here on the right for you. I won't touch on a lot of those, but a lot of great things happening in our organization. Um, the information hub, you know, we, we all work in the DOD, we're here to support each other, we have 14 different tenants. What this provides is, regardless if you're in our tenant or not in IL-5, this has a lot of great information for training. It can be you know, used for anybody, a lot of um, you know, quick reference guides, videos, things that you can use. So please don't hesitate uh, to reach out to that page and you know, just dive around and take a look. There's a lot there for you. Okay, now to the good stuff, right? Let me go ahead and introduce our panel. Um, again, we're gonna be talking about IL-6 and how things are going there. A Lot of great work has been underway for the last two years. Really excited, we just hit a cool milestone that I'll touch on here in just a minute. Um, but without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Jessup to introduce himself. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. I think you need to hold it. Is that better, you can hear me? No? 
Is it better? Okay. Yeah. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for coming out. My name is Jessup McRae. I'm the chief engineer for DOS. Um, I've been within the DOD and the IC for 18 years, nine of those within DOD, uh, working programs for collaboration and identity services. So um, it's an exciting time for DISA to take on these challenges, right, and move us into the cloud from our on-prem legacy services. So happy to be here and talk with everybody um, get, and have a good conversation. Constance? Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? We'll get there. Whoop, yeah, there it is. We'll figure these out. <laughs> Every time it's a little different, isn't it? <laughs> so my name is Constance Janae. I have the privilege of being the uh, GDIT program manager for the uh, IL-6 program. Um, we have a team of incredibly talented engineers and cyber professionals uh, who have been working diligently and in collaboration with uh, Microsoft and, of course, DISA to try to bring, uh, or not try, to bring IL-6 uh, to the forefront um, my background, though, I'm a knowledge manager, so for those of you uh, who have maybe had an opportunity to meet me in the past, I'm a big collaboration specialist. Um, my focus has always been on SharePoint, um, and I just am very passionate about the idea of knowledge sharing across uh, the department. Um, I think we're all very somewhat compartmentalized, and the goal of IL-6 6 especially is to try and have us all operate in the same environment to facilitate smoother collaboration. And with that being said, let me go ahead and introduce you to John Youssef, my Microsoft partner. Thanks, Constance. Uh, nice to meet you all, John Youssef. Um, I'm actually a director within Microsoft's DoD business, focused primarily on this, uh, but I also cover um, some components of the COCOMS and the Fourth Estate as well. Um, really, my role is uh, I'm responsible for product strategy and adoption of Microsoft's hyperscale offerings uh, within the DoD. Obviously, been partnered with GDIT and DISA for several years now on all things DoD 365. Um, but I've also worked on a lot of other big initiatives within Microsoft, like if you've heard of CVR or Global Directory. Those were all things that uh, I helped lead our broader V team um, in terms of implementation. So excited to be here, Marissa. How's that? Okay. All right, thank you guys, appreciate the introduction. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and dive right in. Um, so a lot of you, I'm sure, are aware that Microsoft just announced their general availability of IL-6. Um, that is a big milestone. We've been partnering with them, as I mentioned early on, for about two years now. Um, and we just finished what um, I call our functionality testing. So this is testing the initial capabilities that are coming out with Release 1 from Microsoft. Um, Release 1 includes Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and OneDrive. Um, so we just completed that functionality testing. Everything tested favorable, which is a really exciting time for us because this offered us the opportunity in parallel with their announcement of general availability to open it up to the components to come in and start testing with us and kicking the tires. Um, we still have more work to do as it relates to running through our processes, our ticket escalation process, things of that nature, which we will touch on here, but nonetheless really, really um, an exciting time for the Department of Defense and, and for all of us who have been working on this, um, which leads us to our first question, John, over to you. Um, we're kicking off the panel with, with, uh, with general availability. Um, you know, can you can you tell us a little bit about the expansion of this, and and how things are going? Yeah, sure, happy to, Carissa. So, kind of like you said, uh, alongside the press release, for initial capability, Microsoft was planning to release uh, Office 365 in IL-6 in two initial releases, at least for initial operating co capability. So, release one, like Carissa said, uh, came with Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and OneDrive which, like in Microsoft land, are essentially the foundations for some of the more feature-rich collaboration um, tools that are part of Office 365. So release one is now generally available as of January 25th. Um, we're actually in the final stages of auditing and accreditation for release two, which I think is what really everyone is excited for, which will bring teams as well. So we'll see that come hopefully within the next couple of months. There we go. 
um, related to release two, right? When you think about a warfighting network, you think about aisle six, and, and we're all now spoiled with aisle five and having teams with that collaboration. John, to your point, that is something that's really, really important to the DOD. Um, they're currently targeting release two to be available the end of March, if all goes well, fingers crossed. Um, and I, I think it's really important for folks to remember what we're doing here is revolutionary. This has never been done before. So a lot of folks say to to Microsoft, John feels this, and I know we do, is you know why it's pretty much just copying and pasting code when it's you know really no. We have to build this from the ground up. You're dealing with a little bit, uh, not a little bit, a lot more security parameters that we have to navigate, which. Um, takes a lot of time and effort. So we're looking forward to release two coming out. We're partnering with our AO office so that we, maybe we can get an IATT to get in there before they have that so we can start testing sooner because we do understand the requirements from the DOD and they really are after teams. So sooner the better. So we, we are tracking that. Okay, Jessup. Um, now that we've learned about the capabilities and GA, can you tell us a little bit about how DISA is bringing this classified cloud environment and DOD 365 secret to the DOD? Sure, sure. So it, taking a step back from where we are today and looking back how we got here, um, over DOD has always been a huge supporter of Microsoft tools to get our job done, right? As we saw on IL-5, when we embraced Teams on IL-5 and saw the collaborative nature, everyone took to it very quickly, right? and embraced it, and naturally it took us to the point of how do we get it to IL-6? What do we need to do to make that a, a, a priority, right? But this is a much different animal, right? Getting this functionality to IL-6 is not like anything else because it is completely isolated from everything else. So we knew going into this, and this is going back two years, right? What do we need to do to bring this to the forefront to the community? Um, so. With that thought in mind, we challenge our partners, GDIT and Microsoft, to work with us to make it happen, right? To bring the functionality we need to the forefront, right? That, that the warfighter needs to make this happen on Cypernet. Um, and it's been a good partnership. We've made a lot of progress in a short amount of time, um, and there's a lot more to come. So, I don't know, Constance, if you have anything to add. Yeah, absolutely. To that. <clears throat> so. And I apologize, folks. I think both Chris and I are dealing with some fun, you know, cold or something, so my apologies. Um, you know, it was quite the task, right, to be presented with how do you bring a very common, very uh, useful set of tools into a secure environment. I mean, you know, you, you talk to anybody and you say, yeah, I'm bringing, I'm bringing the cloud to Sipper, and they just sort of look at you kind of funny. Um, but it really has been a, um, an amazing experience working hand in hand with Microsoft, with DISA, with the DOD CIO, um, to do a substantial amount of testing on this product. As Carissa mentioned, right, there's, there's been, um, you know, this is, this is it, this is historical. Um, nothing has been done like this before. And so it's not just a simple copy and paste. You know, Microsoft did their due diligence and a substantial amount of testing, and then they came and brought it over to us where we did more testing. <laughs> um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but the, the goal here really is, you know, it, it has definitely taken time, right? And it's definitely taken a lot to, to identify um, where there might be some issues and get them resolved. Um, but we're very excited about where we are. And, you know, it's just amazing to believe that we're entering into this new phase. Um, and, and I was just going to mention, there's a lot of change from the Microsoft side, right? It's a challenge to bring this into the, into the secure environment. It's a challenge for, for DISA, right, to make sure that we are scaling our security requirements and doing our testing differently to support a cloud model where we've been used to an on-prem model for so long, right? Not easy to, to change those those paths, but you know, we're working together to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know, John, can you talk a little bit though about some of the differences between Nipper and Sipper and what folks might be seeing? Yeah, sure. Um, so just uh, a little insight, I don't think, okay, there we go. A little insight into how Microsoft does engineering uh, to kind of touch on what Constance said, but we use something called a deployment ring uh, de development methodology. So as new features 
are being developed. They start obviously internally to the engineering team. They eventually make their way out to the commercial world and then they work their way up to higher classification clouds like IL-5 and IL-6 ultimately. Obviously IL-6 has its own challenges because it's completely air-gapped and it requires essentially net new engineering from the ground up. Um, I think the really good thing about the partnership between this and GDIT and Microsoft is as these new capabilities are being developed in the lower classification clouds, we get to deploy them to the warfighter on IL-5 or on Nipper um, as we work through some of the engineering and accreditation hurdles to get them into IL-6. So that's probably the biggest thing I think, Constance, is you know, there's a lot of paperwork that goes with uh, <laughs> getting things into IL-6. Um, and the, just the challenges of the fact that IL-6 is air-gapped means there's a lot less talent pool that can actually work on it. That's right. Um, you know, and it's just like a, a lot larger of a feat in my mind to support something that is ultra critical for our, um, our warfighter. Yeah, that's right. And, and just for folks that aren't familiar with the air gap term, can you tell everybody what it means to be air gapped? Sure. So uh, obviously Office 365 on the commercial side, even actually up to IL-5, is accessible from the internet. But given that air gap, like for IL-6, we're talking about a classified workload. It carries the same kind of network boundary that SipperNet um, or any impact level six network has. So there is no internet access. It's actually only available uh, from the SipperNet or equivalent IL-6 uh, network. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it, uh, Chris. I like you can't get to it from the outside. <laughs> that's perfect. Thank you, yep. um, Constance. This next one is for you. So earlier on, I mentioned we just finished our functionality testing. Can you talk about the different testing phases that we're undergoing now and, and where we're going next? You bet. So, <clears throat> Carissa kind of stole my thunder. And she <laughs> said that uh, the functionality testing came through uh, quite favorably. It did. We spent um, a, a significant amount of time uh, going in and testing all of the capabilities that were available in, uh, in R1. Um, you know, again, it being built from the ground up meant that, you know, we really needed to make sure that things like Office was working, um, SharePoint, uh, OneDrive, Power Platform. So I'm happy to say that you know Power Apps and Power Automate are also available. Um, so we did a lot of functionality testing to make sure uh, that the product that uh, was ultimately going to be delivered was going to work as expected uh, in IL-6 just as it does for IL-5. Um, that was being done basically from the end of August to the end of January. That was what we were calling our canary testing or government acceptance testing. Um, and as we mentioned, it came through quite favorably. Um, we just wrapped up our component use case testing. Um, we had reached out over a year ago now uh, to the department uh, and various components to ask for their use cases for how they would intend to use M365 in the cloud uh, for IL-6. Uh, and they provided us with around 150 <laughs> some odd use cases. Uh, some of them were the same, some of them were a little different. Um, but what we did is we did an analysis against those to identify, you know, what are the, some of the key uh, capabilities that uh, are very critical to the components. Obviously, data segregation is one of them. I think most folks are tracking that the idea is for all of us to operate in a single tenant. Um, you know, that's a, that's a little daunting if you think about it, right? Um, but it's, it's absolutely doable. But in order to do that, we really have to make sure that we have appropriate data separation capabilities in place, um, that we have appropriate controls and, and access in place. Um, so that's part of what the component use case testing has been, and we just wrapped that up. Um, I will say in general, you know, we tested things like Exchange, we tested um, some OneDrive, but we really focused our attention on the purview suite capabilities. Um, there's some stuff that we need to work with Microsoft on to kind of further solidify, but generally speaking, it's, it's in pretty good shape. Um, but I think that, you know, as we shift now into the limited user assessment that's going on and, and opening it up to more of the department to come in and kick the tires, um, you know, we're standing by at the ready. To, to provide that kind of support and to be able to, to work with Microsoft on any issues that further come up. Can you elaborate a little bit on what Purview is and why it's so crucial to be in a multi-organizational single tenant? Yeah, absolutely. So Purview, um, and 
John, please keep me honest, yes. man. <laughs> um, so Purview really tends to focus on, you know, your information governance. Your so your you know, your records management falls under Purview. Um, your uh, let me see if I get this right. Your okay, okay, help me out, John. Help me out, John. <laughs> I don't know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the advanced information protection, AIP, um, all of that, there's there's a series of, unfortunately, they're the ones that were the most critical to our components, unfortunately. I apologize, guys. I'm, it's the day quill. Um, <laughs> but the, you know, we found that there's a lot there, but it's very manual right now, right? So you have to rely heavily on people doing your own classification and marking. You have to rely heavily on you know, making sure that people know how to handle permissions in SharePoint and OneDrive. Um, and obviously the idea is, is that the more we can make that more automated, right. um, it takes some of that human factor away that's and right. makes it a little bit more secure. So that's the only reason why we're seeing a little bit more risk with what's available in R1 as it relates to purview. That doesn't mean that it's not possible by all means, um, but it's just, you know, we're working on ideas on, on how to shore that up. And, and the good news is, um, it's going to be comparable to what you see on-prem today. Our focus is to continue to evolve. We want to continue to automate, which is why this partnership between GDIT, Microsoft, DISA to make that happen is really critical. Um, and part of what we do and those compu component use cases that Constance spoke about Getting those racking and stacking and prioritizing the capabilities that the DOD says, hey, this is critical and this is what I need in order for me to feel comfortable to come into this environment is so crucial so that Microsoft can rack and stack their roadmap of capabilities that are going to be rolled out. So it's, it's really important for us to continue to vocalize with the, with the mission partners what we're seeing, what's coming, get feedback from them so that we can report that back. If we're all coming at Microsoft at the same time, <laughs> it's really hard for them to figure out, okay, well, what should be priority one, so forth and so on, which is why getting those component use cases so that we could prioritize on behalf of the DOD and get that back to them has been really helpful, I would say, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but so that they can uh, determine what their roadmap and release schedule is going to be. Did you have something you wanted to add? No, I think you hit a lot of the points I was going to say. Okay. But, but, but I, I will add, um, you know, as we move into this stage of testing, right, we're talking a lot about the, the technical merits of what needs to be done, and, and we're still working through what, what we have to do to get there, right? But we're expanding this out to the rest of the, the mission partners to take kind of this next step with us, right? Because we need to look at more than just those pieces, right? We need to look at how the onboarding is going to work how the identity management is going to work. We need to flush those pieces out and make sure they're ready for mass migrations coming in. So I think we're sitting at about 450 people that we're going to be bringing in to this acceptance testing um, to work with us, partner with us, right, and, and, and Microsoft to, to flush it out, right? Yeah. So it's, it's exciting. It's exciting to do, take that journey with everyone and not just do it on the DISA side. Agreed. Very much so. And so just to elaborate a little bit on the, the 450 users. So I talked about the fact that general availability was announced January 25th. Um, the functionality testing that Constance mentioned was really favorable. It allowed us to actually shift our schedule to the left um, and welcome in components up to 450 users to come in and kick the tires, right? We put some guardrails around it. Again, I don't have ticket, a, a ticketing system established quite yet. Um, that, that'll be coming here in the next month or so. But why wait, right? Let folks come in. We do have your component use cases, but if you want to come in with a few users and kick the tires yourself, by all means, why, why not let us do that? Um, the 450 users you know, DOD is pretty big. So we have to figure out how do we break that out and make sure that, you know, the CIOs from the different components have visibility into who we're going to allow in because we got to be careful about the subcomponents coming. Um, so what we did is we said, okay, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, so forth, each of you can bring up to 25. CIO, you decide who you want to have come in. Um, we, we followed a similar pattern with the DAFAs, the defense agencies, and the combatant commands, just to try to control that a little bit. Um, 
So far, we have about nine different organizations since January 30th that have expressed interest. So we've passed out to them the network readiness information, the client configuration guide, and we're thinking, we were just talking before this meeting, next week we should have our first group of uh, users coming in to start kick the tires, which is, which is really exciting given and, all the time. You know, the good news is there's a lot of lessons learned, right? Yeah. We yeah. have experience on our side in the joint tenant to have a multi-organization tenant and what that means. That's so right. what we've already developed for IL-5 naturally moves over to IL-6 and gets updated for the requirements there, right? So we're able to move a little bit faster based off of what we already know in IL-5. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, we'll continue to get these lessons learned from IL-6 so that we're ready to support migrations, um, which um, I think brings us into our next question here for Jessa. <laughs> What do mission partners need to know to become candidates for the full adoption? Right, and I, th I think we've actually hit on a lot of those points, right? Yeah. What, what, what needs to happen for these folks to come in? We've talked about the prerequisites for these folks, right? That we don't have ticket, ticketing systems available, right? But we need those folks that are technically oriented and we need to work with the, the mission partners, IT staff, right? To flush everything out, right? To get everything prepared for the larger migrations that are, that are coming in the not too distant future. Yeah. yeah. Um, and as we start talking about the prerequisites, um, we partnered with the DOD CIO's office to obtain funding for the combatant commands and the defense agencies to pay for their licensing. Um, the licensing is called X3 for those that are familiar with Microsoft's licensing model and you have to have a PhD to understand it. 100%. Sorry, John. <laughs> Um, but it's called X3 instead of E3. Um, they don't have X5 out yet. That is something that'll be coming. Um, so X3 will be the license. Most of us are already on E3 on the IL-5 side, so it'll really just be an add-on license. Um, and don't quote me the cost, but I wanna say like it's around $17 and some change per user per month that you can purchase off of the DOS uh, BPA. Um, but because of the funding we receive from the DOD CIO's office for the defense agencies and the combatant commands, we'll be able to go ahead and take care of that for them. Um, we also received funding to um, operate and sustain the tenants, so we will not have to establish a reimbursable rate for the combatant commands and the defense agencies, um, along with helping them with their migration support. So, which is, which is really important, I think, um, because as we all know, we all have competing priorities especially when you talk about what's going on on the high side. So for us to be able to get that funding and, and that support from the DOD CIO's office to help make that transition seamless and dedicate an or a group of users or a group of people uh, from our user engagement team to come in and help with their transition and getting their networks ready, um, I think is, is really important. Anything you wanna to touch on what we've seen on the SIPR side with getting the network ready and how it varies to what we saw in IL-5? It's a much different world. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, it's a whole different set of challenges, you know, to make sure that we have all the connections we need to be successful in what has to be done, which is why it's important to get folks in now, right, and work through whatever may be blocking between us, between that cloud environment, and your on-prem resources, right? Your desktop to get your users on. Right, and it's a process. It's a process that we'll work through together to get there. Yeah. Um, we're going to adopt a lot of what we used in IL-5 from a checklist perspective. Again, because we have this funding and we're able to help a lot of folks, and even for the services, right? I, I, don't, I don't have the funding for the services, but I still have all the materials and the tools that I can absolutely pass on and, and we can assist. Um, Constance, do you want to touch a little bit on some of those checklists and things that we've been working on? Yeah, absolutely. You know. There's, there is quite a bit out there that, um, that the user engagement team within the DOS program has been able to put together and can facilitate for IL-6. Um, you know, yeah, we can use that. checklist yeah. after checklist. There's a great um, uh, place within the DOD 365J hub, nope. information Nothing hub, which is our DOD 365 sec information hub um, that will take you directly to uh, the onboarding guide, uh, the client configuration guide, um, you know, 
And the, in the areas that you know, mission partners and components can work on right now, right? You know, one of the biggest challenges, of course, for any migration is um, people tend to like to hold on to their emails. Um, so I think the idea is to try and uh, clean up your mailboxes. You know, get your depot records updated. Right, that's another big one that um, can help because, of course, being in a single vision tenant, tool. Yeah, yeah. We and you know we want to make sure that that you know your your employees, your folks are actually aligned to the appropriate organization um, because that's how some of that um, permissions is going to be tracked and, right. and that that delegation or certainly separation of, of data. Um, you know, I think. The, the ultimate end goal is as you're as you're getting ready to come in, right, is is to submit that that request form, right, um, and and express your interest, and then that allows the user engagement team to kind of reach out and engage. I think the the one area though I know that that we saw some challenges with certainly is at the client level, right. I think Jessup kind of hit hit at this a little bit. Um, there are going to be some some changes that are going to need to happen. Um, at the workstation level in order to be able to operate and access M365 and DOD 365 SEC. And the sooner, uh, the sooner your organizations that are responsible for desktop configuration are on board and tracking and having this kind of go through their change management, uh, the faster you'll be able to, to adopt and, and come in, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're gonna transition a little bit. Jessup, this next one's for you. Can you give us an update on the releasable two status and what mission partners need to know? Yep, so rel is a huge topic for Cipernet, right? It's on the forefront of everybody's brain to make sure we're supporting that, that group, right? As the best that we can, right? And then it's evolving topic, right? We have a suite of tools that we're looking at through Microsoft, right? And third party to make sure we're meeting all the, the requirements that people need to be successful, right? Um, for release one, we're we're right at the gate, right? We have what we needed, what we need, right? We're we're working IP, DLP, and um, classification marking, right? Three big points that we've got to hit, um, and Microsoft's still developing some of those as we go, right? And and Jack probably hit on some of that development work going on, but it's an evolving process, right? Uh, and we're, we're, make, we're, we're getting there, right? We're getting there slow but sure. Um, but between those three tools, I think we're going to be able to support the needs of that, of that group, right, to be successful within a single tenancy. Um, going into R1, you know, the capabilities you're used to, um, supporting mail, you know, sending mail uh, across to the Five Eyes community is all going to be there, supported from the beginning. Um, and as we look into getting into Teams and Release 2, right, we'll be focused on the data segregation that's required to, to have people in a single tenancy. Yeah, agreed. And the combatant commands actually put together a very lengthy <laughs> 40 plus page document about RHEL2 and getting after uh, classification markings and, and uh, you know why it's so critical for them, which we welcome that, right? I mean, we're standing this up for the DOD. It's important that we understand the requirements and we continue that partnership with GDIT and Microsoft so that, you know, we talk about that roadmap and making sure that these capabilities are going to be ready for future releases. Um, so, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know that we've really hit on it enough. The, the amount of time that was spent over a year ago, right, developing the requirements with the community, mm -hmm. right? We spent a lot of time pulling this information together to make sure we were testing this and building to a, to a structure that is going to support everybody's needs, not just to what we're doing now, but what we need to do next. Yep. Right? It can't be understated, you know, that we're, we're driving to do something more than what is available to everyone today. That's no, right. I, I agree. And, 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 you know, I think nothing is more um, relevant at this point uh, if you think about what's been in the news lately. That's right. And the fact that our, our friends to the north, we were working with them on taking care of things that were in the air. <laughs> um, and we were actually just talking about this last night about, you know, that collaboration, being able to work with our partners um, using the tools that we have available to us is incredibly important. We learned that 
also when we were in uh, at the ASEA uh, Indo PACOM, right? right, right, and and the the importance uh, of collaboration with our partners. So this is one area that we're taking very very seriously, um, and looking to ensure that um, we can facilitate appropriate collaborations with all of our partners. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to open up to questions here in just a minute, but before I do that, I'd like to turn it over to the panelists for any closing remarks. Jessup, I'll start with you. Well, I appreciate everybody's time, right? Uh, again, this is it's an exciting time for me. It's an exciting time for DISA, right, to see this sort of functionality coming out to the forefront and support the community in a way that we've never been able to in the past, right? Something that I know even my time within DISA, right, has been conversational. How do we how do we make this collaboration work more seamlessly for everybody, right? Um, and we're right on the cusp of really seeing that for come to fruition. So it's exciting. I'm happy Thank to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, I know I I am proud to be able to speak on behalf of GDIT that you know this is a this is history in the making. It seems a little silly for me to say it that way. I, I and I, I recognize that maybe I. I'm wearing my Carnegie Mellon <laughs> um, pr with pride, but uh, you know we've never done this before, and we're getting to do this with our partners, and we're getting to do this for the warfighter, um, and it's just been such an amazing experience, and and you know I'm thrilled to be able to see it come to fruition. Yeah. Yeah, I mean echoing or adding on to what you said, Constance. Like this is the first of its kind. Um, Nobody has ever really done uh, like a hyperscale software as a service offering at the IL-6 level. So truly remarkable. Uh, we definitely are very humbled and appreciate the partnership. And we're really just looking forward to being able to deliver this capability to our servicemen and women. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I echo all of that. Um, and I do want to touch on uh, what I have up on the screen here. We talked about the information hub. Uh, we also have our information center. I tell my team all the time, trans transparency is key to the success of the delivery of IL-6, not just with the folks I have up here, but also with our mission partners. Hearing from you, understanding your needs, making sure you have what you need is really what drives us to do what we do every day. Um, and that's our goal and that's our focus. So these centers is where we try to put information um, feel free to go there. It has our schedule. Our schedule is fluid. Our director pushes us very hard to deliver faster, as fast as we can, uh, without being reckless, but to get out there because that's what you need, that he's, he listens to you and, and so do we. Um, and I would love to hear, you know, if there's other things that we can be doing to help get you all the, um, the capabilities faster, uh, we'd love to hear from you. But again, a lot of information here, a place where you can contact us, uh, where you can see the status of, um, of SEC. Um, we also have a testing dashboard. Um, it, it's visible. It, you can go and dive. There's a lot of information, but if you're interested, um, every test that we perform through our functionality testing phase is there. All of our component use cases, thousands, is thousands a safe term? Yeah. <laughs> of tests that we completed. Um, and you can see all the results. It's broken down by parent organization. Really, really well done by the team. Um, so feel free to, uh, to take a look. Um, and with that, I will, am I on, am I good on time? Uh, we will open it up for questions. Yeah, so uh, Commander Nick Goddard, uh, Director of Ops at Navy Cyber Defense Operations Command. So we're big fans of the Microsoft uh, Enterprise suite of tools that we've been able to use on IL-5 for defense, specifically Defender suite of tools. So first question is, is there an opportunity for Defender suite of tools to be migrated in IL-6? We've had that discussion with Don CIO and Aaron Weiss's team and that's where we're driving. Um, second question related to that, if I know that's a much harder question long term. <laughs> uh, secondly, cross-domain solutions from IL-5 into 6 or the other way around, so that way we can actually take advantage of what's happening at Microsoft on the IL-5 tenant, so that way we can do analytics at IL-6. Yeah, great and point. And yes, can we partner going forward with IL-6? Yes. yes. Um, good question on MDE, and I'm glad you brought that up, because that's a big one, right? Um, and, and Mr. I, Weiss has definitely pushed that one very hard. Uh, do you want to touch on the status of that? Sure. Um, so obviously, like 
office is the foundation for some of those other defender capabilities. You can't have uh, Intune MDE without the rest of the suite there. Um, so I think as this initial release gets rolled out, it's really about let's get folks in there, let's put the policies in place, kind of like what Constance touched on, let's actually get the collaboration happening, and then once we're out of the gate, then those other tools are coming. Um, they are very high on the backlog inside of Microsoft, I will say that. They're almost right there at the top, right after these uh, initial releases for R1 and R2, so we don't expect them to take too much longer once Office is there. There we go. I know there was a meeting um, recently out in Redmond where that was one of the top ones on the list. So um, I know Mr. Weiss and General Skinner have partnered to, to really, and that gets, at, that gets into the priorities, right? Making sure we as a DOD are telling them what needs to be rolled out. MDE is number one on that. Cross domain. Cross domain, yeah. So, uh, and, and I'll pass it over, but that is not lost, right? It was part of our testing, right? Cross domain going through, it tested successfully. I don't know whether you want to touch on it more, no. but no, it's ahead. not lost on us, right? It, it is, it was, and it was successfully tested within what we currently have available to us. Yeah, both ways. Both ways. Both it ways. It was successful, and that was a big one from our AO as well. Go ahead, Constance. No, I was just going to say both ways with attachments. We've, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely using it because Again, my background being collaboration and SharePoint and the fact that we are air-gapped, um, you know, a lot of the beauty of a lot of the products for the cloud has been, oh, well, you have access to, you know, a, a cloud uh, library of pictures and you have, you know, and these things don't, they don't exist and, you know, you don't have access to that anymore. So moving things back and forth is going to be important. Um, but yes, we absolutely have tested it and, and it's working. It's working, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Does that help? I have a question. Yes, hi. Hi, John Marcy, supporting the DOD CIO with the ECAPS program. Yeah. So on the IL-6, I want to make sure before you guys turn on the phone system functionality yeah. that it supports MLPP. So it should be interoperable with ASIP so that the EC VoIP platform right. can plug and play. Because we have to be able to, for the command and control, that's a policy on IL-6 is going to have to support ASIP. Yep. Yep. So the EC uh, or the, the eVoIP and the EC VoIP team, while they're not under my portfolio, they sit in the same division. So we partner with them very, very closely. Um, from a Microsoft perspective, voice on the IL6 side roadmap, I don't know where that falls. It's a ways out, though, if I'm not mistaken. It, it's a ways out. I will say um, how the DOD does voice inside of Office is very different than how the commercial world does it. Um, Obviously, you know, this manages the SVCs. Uh, within IL-5, I would assume something similar is going to take place with IL-6, which means, you know, your requirements are really DISA requirements, not Microsoft requirements, because... Okay. One more time. You, there you go. You have to initiate the call from the client, so you have to be able to support the MLPP codes through your uh, SIP proxy. Yeah, I understand. Um, and I know that's something that we do right now in IL-5 as well, so we don't do it. Uh, I will I will sync with you later and and you and I can talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good points, right? We, we appreciate the conversation. Oh, and there's Victor. He's a good guy to know about that stuff too. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I know we've had this conversation and it's uh, far and wide. Is there a chance you will publish something that identifies the features and capabilities within release one, release two, release oh, yeah. three, so that we understand the timeline of for the availability of these features? I think, is that, we have on that there. on the, yep. it, but it Microsoft has something on your page too, right? Or no? I think we did on the blog that was published, we listed some of yeah. the features that were there, but uh, DISA has like a very, a much more in detail list or in depth list of what is available in R1 and R2. Along with the service description. So if you want to hang around, we'll get your uh, card or your information and we'll get you that. Absolutely. Hi. Hello, Captain Hi. Isbell from uh, Res4. Question for I'm just curious on the, uh, the deliverable of the service. Is it more of a desktop? Is it AVD? Is it a thin client or all of the above? So I'll, 
You want to take AVD's it? her favorite topic. <laughs> you, just, you just made a best friend over here. She rides me hard about IL-6 AVD. <laughs> we're going to be speaking later about it. Go ahead. So the, the scope of what we're taking out is really the, the core for release one, mail, SharePoint, and OneDrive functionality, right? The other things are certainly things that we're looking at, but they're not really scoped within the R1 release of where we're headed, you know, first and foremost, right? I think we're, I won't speak out of turn, but we're building a foundation, right? We're, we're building a foundation of, of capabilities within R1, which is then used to build the rest of the Microsoft suite that, that everyone's looking for. So desktop and web focused right now, um, AVD coming right behind it. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, we're, we're definitely partnered together with DISA. Um, like Jessup said, we're, we're focused on the cloud side of things right now. Um, and we plan to support everything that you have in IL-5 right now. So whether that is thick client on the machine or VDI via AVD, um, it's all going to come. Yeah, and um, putting you on the spot. So this is Jillian Busick. So she's the Sipper 2.0, running Sipper 2.0 modernization. And so she and I collaborate a lot. AVD is one of her big topics. So if you guys want to want to chat later. Any other questions? Uh, yes, good morning. Hi. Uh, Mark good morning. Maglin, ECS. Uh, Sipper is the Warfighters Network. That's what we take to, to, to war. How is this going to work in a DDL environment? Yeah, so DDL, who wants to oh. take that one? <laughs> DDL continues to be a tough topic, right? Um, there are several working groups within the community that are working to address DDL, right? And we will we continue to partner with them to make sure we're supporting as best we can to the efforts they're trying to put forward, right? But the short answer is there is no solid solution yet for DDL and Zipper, right? There's a, there's theories, right? And I think we're going to be, you know, trying those things out, right? We're we're, we're talking to folks like the Marine Corps right now on what they're trying to accomplish, how they're trying to, and how we can support it, right? Um, but we don't, we don't have a firm answer on how that's going to be done right out of the gate. Cor and correct me if I'm wrong, DDL right now, and this is a Microsoft question, um, DDL is really focused on the IL-5 side right now. You guys haven't started to, to tap into that too much in the high side? Yeah, the, our Navy team actually is leading the charge That's right. with uh, what we're doing with DDL and for IL-5 specifically. Um, so you're right. Like it, it's definitely a still a, a massive engineering effort. Um, you know, so it's going to be one of those things that we tackle. DDL is a tough topic on IL-5, yeah. right? There, there's no answer on IL-5 on how to address DDL, right, completely. Right? There's a lot of different requirements out there. And so IL-6 is even that much more of a challenge, right? So uh, follow-up follow -up question. Uh, follow-up question is, uh, have you done bandwidth testing on the production network? Because as soon as you roll this out, everybody's going to be in the middle that, That's a great question. So um, I, I, think I, I think I heard you were asking whether or not we'd done any, any bandwidth testing? Um, yes. The short answer is yes. And actually, uh, right now, it's very favorable. The um, We have, and that even included teams, believe it or not. So so the modeling that was done um, and simulations actually posed very favorably um, on the SIPR network on IL-6. Um, we also was doing, we did some uh, component use case testing with folks out in PAC. Yep. Um, and they also didn't experience any latency issues. Um, which was good to know. To, I'm, I've, at, at scale. Right. So at both the, uh, on the on the IL-5 and on the IL-6 networks, but when you're talking about putting 3 million people on on uh, the IL-5 environment, and that's a significant increase. So just looking at the, you know, the scaling of those metrics. Yeah, agreed. So we work as best we can with our modeling teams to say how are we going to scale and how are we going to support that, right? But there may be growing pains, right? As we continue to scale up, we'll, we'll work and make sure we're staying ahead of it. Well, and, and growing pains is a really important term, right? Yeah. Remember, this is historic what's being done. This has never been done. So creating this synergy and creating this partnership, but also ha making sure that mission partners have the understanding that, remember, we're moving stuff into the cloud on the high side. That's, that's not been done. So we have to um, not be reckless, proceed with caution, um, and manage expectations. 
that that is critical um, and you bring up a really good point so when we talk about my migration approach and bringing on these hundreds of thousands of people into this environment you can't start cutting people over you know at the hundreds of thousands all at once it's got to be scaled so we do have our modeling sim team monitoring that and then the right folks behind ready to take action and make whatever changes we need to to support anybody else how am I doing on time? Yes, hi. Hey, Kevin Leary, CO3. I was wondering about technical and accreditation challenges you guys have had to overcome to deploy to IL-6 Cloud. Yeah, you want to take that one? It, it doesn't have to be super yeah. detailed, but... No, I mean, a, as we mentioned early on, right, we're, we're breaking new ground, right? And that means really working closely with our AO to make sure that we're checking all the boxes, right? Um, Microsoft is doing a, a lot of work, right, within the AO's office to make sure that they're staying in line with the regulations that we need to, to stay in line with, right? So we, we have, you know, our approvals to move forward, right? We, we have everything in line which needs to be there. Um, but there's always more work to do, yeah. right? I, and and I, I, Microsoft, you probably felt it worse than than we did. <laughs> they took the brunt. Yeah, you guys took the brunt of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, but like you said, Joseph, um, very close working relationship between the engineering teams and the AO's office. Uh, so from a policy perspective, I think that part is like very well defined. The technical challenges really just come back to the point that I said earlier. Like There's a much smaller pool of engineers that are deploying this. Everything essentially is being rewritten and re-engineered for IL-6 and just like the volume of end users that are testing it is much smaller. So obviously the bugs don't either get identified or corrected as quickly as they do on the low side. And, and I should mention our PA and our I, IATT are going in phases, right? Yeah. So as we increase our security, as we increase our functionality, right? Um, we're getting approval to do more and take that next step. So we're not going for just a one and done kind of thing. We're going back. We're going back to the AO. We're saying, okay, we've, we've met these this criteria. Let's expand the scope a little bit, right? And we continue to work that that road. And our security manager, I may say this wrong because I'm stretching my knowledge and understanding of this, but the way we broke it out, we did uh, an accreditation package for our IaaS and PaaS environment, and then a separate one for the SaaS side. Um, as well, so uh, following the same method that we used for the IL-5 side too, which I think I think helped streamline some of that as well. And I do, I, if you don't mind, I think the most important thing here, right, is that partnership. You know, we talk, we've been talking about the partnership that's among us, but we've had such a close partnership with oh. the, the Army folks, the AO office, just, they have been phenomenal um, because it is also a change in thought process, right? Like we're we're dealing with an evergreen product now versus, you know, an on-prem, this is what you need to do. So it's... it's Well, and we're paving the way for other yeah. cloud providers, right? So... Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think we have time for a couple more if anybody else has any questions. Nothing? All right, well, thank you again to the panel um, and, and for folks for coming out today and for having us today. Um, we'll be around, um, and I think we're gonna be at the, the booth too? Yeah, so. I think we'll be at the booth too, so it's just right behind this blue, um, you know, just right on the other side here. Uh, if you guys wanna come by, our folks are over there. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for coming out, and we'll, we'll hang around here a little bit too if anybody has some follow-up questions. Have a great day.